what a great chapter. I, uh, I planned on preaching a kind of topical message, and I'm thinking about Memorial Day, and I was thinking about things that we're supposed to remember. One of the kids, I don't remember who it was, but we were driving, and they asked about, you know, how somebody, when they make a, a burial, you know, maybe you lose a pet or something like that, and you put them in the ground, and they would stack lots of stones on top of them. I mean, you go to a gravesite, gravesite, there's a, a, a tombstones or headstones, you know, but, but you know, if you, if you go out and see some kind of handmade, you know, uh, just a little, or on the side of the road, or, or I guess they wouldn't bury a body there, but you, you understand what I'm saying. They pile lots of stones on top of each other, and they was like, what's that about? Now, I don't know. There might be some other reasons that people did that, but I said it probably goes back to, I mean, think about even biblical times, there would be stones gathered together, heaped up on top of every culture has something like that. They would heap up all these stones, and, uh, and it would be a memorial. You know, Joshua talks about that, that, you know, there'll come a time when, when the next generation will say, what mean you by these stones? And they'll be able to tell them the story about the events that took place during that time. And so I was thinking about uh, just things that we're supposed to remember, and I got to think about a lot of things that we're not supposed to remember. Remember no more, you know, certain things. And, and I was going to preach a topical message. And all I kept thinking about was uh, remember all his benefits. For, forget not all his benefits. And so I just started reading this chapter. And I thought, you know what? I just don't even want to preach topical. I just want to stick here in this chapter for the most part. We'll look at some other places and talk about it. But so much right here out of this chapter uh, in terms of remembering certain thing basically just two main things that we're talking about in this message about things to uh to remember and like i said it's memorial day tomorrow and so we are thinking about remembering uh those who have paid you know with for their their life you know through uh, uh fighting in wars and all that this that's what it's supposed to be i think a lot of people just go to the gravesides and put flowers on the graves and who knows you know or they make it a bit like kind of like Veterans Day and they just honor everybody who's in the military or whatever. But no, the, the idea of Memorial Day is to remember the fallen, remember those who have uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice. And so it's appropriate, I think, that we'll talk about uh, things that we remember. But one thing I did notice, and again, I'm, I'm going to stick here in this chapter as far as the text of the, of the message. But one thing I did notice going through the Bible, a lot of times where God talks about things that he remembers... And things that he forgets. And I feel like it's kind of metaphoric because I'm thinking he's God. I mean, surely he, there's nothing he could forget. And technically, we're kind of like that, too. Like, if we forgive somebody, you know, it's not like we really forget. But we'll just say, hey, it's like it never happened. You know, I forgot about it. He didn't really forget about it. I don't know. Maybe God just supernaturally just puts it totally from him. But there's some things that he forgets. Aren't you glad that our sins? Amen. Hebrews 8, chapter 12, he says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, Praise the Lord. Whether that means, you know, he's never, you know, he doesn't know that they existed or not. I mean, however literally you want to take that. Hey, he's not going to try us for our sins. He's not going to look at us and say, oh, you know, like I talked about here recently, it's not a pre-existing condition. You know, well, I would save you, but... You know, you have that baggage from your past. Nope, you forgot it. And blood, blood of Jesus washed that away. And so uh, praise the Lord for God's forgetfulness in that way, that he would put something from it. Now look at our text here, Psalm 103, starting in verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, praise the Lord for that too, and plenteous in mercy, he will, not he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Isn't that a blessing? No. Uh, if you believe in a flat earth, you might not understand as far as the east is from the west, but you've probably heard before that if you go east, right, you're constantly going east. There's no point where you... Now, if I'm going north, eventually I'm going south at some point. But if you're going... This is just the way I've heard it explained this way. I don't know <laughs> if that's what was intended by the text there. But if you go east, you're always going east. If you go west, you're always going west. 
And so I, I like the fact that he said, as far as the East, like it's never going to join, you know, and, and it become, it's just, it's just going to keep on going. And so, uh, uh, so the Lord has forgotten, uh, has forgotten our iniquities. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. But here's one thing that he remembers. Look at verse 14. There's one thing that he remembers. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. <laughs> he doesn't forget making man out of the dust of the ground. He knows that. He knows what we're made out of. He knows how weak we are. He knows when we mess up. He, you know, it's never a surprise to him. You know, right. sometimes he has to bestow his wrath upon certain things that we do. But the reason he's so merciful and so long-suffering because he remembers that we are but dust. Remember Genesis uh, chapter 3. Look at Genesis 3, verse 19. Sometimes people will quote this at a funeral when somebody passes away. They'll quote Genesis 3, 19. It says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. I uh, recently preached a message, and uh, I was inspired by the conversation, Brother uh, Justin and, uh, and Brother Dan and I had out here. We were talking about that, and I don't remember why it came up, but he brought up Ecclesiastes. Go there, if you will. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3. And verse 21, and I've read this a lot of times and had some different thoughts about it, but I, I guess it never really hit me uh, the way it did at this time. And so I, I started a, a series on Wednesday nights in Iola about animals in the Bible. And the very first message was kind of an introduction, and it was saying that basically we are animals, right? In our natural form, we're animals. And that's hard for me to even say because I know God created us so much higher than the animals and gave us dominion over all the animals and all that. But if you read this whole chapter here, uh, uh, towards the beginning, he's talking about uh, the, the, the wickedness of man. Look at verse 17, actually. Chapter 3, verse 17. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time, uh, there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For, they, uh, for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that the man hath no preeminence above the beast, for all is vanity. I mean, it's a pretty just, that's a negative way of looking at things. But you got to remember, he, 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 uh, uh, Solomon here was kind of just, just depressed. He was in the flesh. He was thinking about things under the sun. He wasn't thinking about heavenly things. And so he was reminded that everything's going to die. All his riches are going to come to naught. Some other man's going to get them. And he's remembering all these types of things. And so uh, when he talks about this, he was remembering, look, even the righteousness, you know, what you, you know, the people do, uh, really they're no better than the beast. All goes to one place. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again. And then this was the verse that we were talking about, verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Look, if you die without Christ, if you die and you're just a natural man like an animal, then just like the atheists say, you know, hey, well, I'm going to die. I'm just going to go into the dust. Now, we know their soul is going to go to hell, but uh, their body, just in the dust, just like every animal. But we don't think in terms of that. We think, hey, the spirit of man goes upward, right? And so, uh, anyway, just kind of interesting, but... But all God knows we were made from dust. We're going to return to dust. Uh, it's up to him to raise us up one day. He's going to do that and give us glorified bodies. But in the meantime, uh, we, that's, just, that's just what we are. Now, in this chapter, uh, like I said, it's not going to be topical like I planned to. But we're going to see a couple things here that we need to remember. And, uh, and I'll mention a couple things that we also need to forget here. Number one, look at verse... 1 and 2, back to uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. What should we remember? Now, again, let me just say, I'm not, I don't see anything wrong with remembering fallen soldiers. You know, this morning in Sunday school, we talked about the, uh, 
I talked about the, the we're, we're talking about banners and ensigns and flags and stuff like that. And, and, and I was talking about that Iwo Jima, what's it called? The flag over Iwo Jima or something where the Marines are, are, are all, I don't know why it takes 10 guys, but they're lifting up this flag, right? And putting it into place and it makes a really good photo. And, uh, and they, they, you know, in the forties, I think it was, this photo was taken and it received some kind of award. Nine years later, they made a monument, the Marine Corps monument, and they and they made a statue out of it. And uh, anyway, and so you know, I look at those things. My dad was a Marine. We went to different places like that a lot. You know, we looked at memorials. You look at the graves of all soldiers that have died, and and look, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't make light of that. I understand that. Uh, I'm thankful for soldiers that have fought. Thankful for our freedom. Look, I I'm thankful for doctors and nurses. I'm thankful for, uh, you know, all these people. I'm thankful for uh, what they contribute to society. I'm thankful for technology. Who's thankful for technology? I'm thankful for guys like Brother Steve that understand technology because I sure don't, right? But God gives different gifts to different people and I'm thankful for them. But listen to me. It's not the doctor that makes me healthy, you know? It's not, it's not the, the, it's not the soldier I remember singing this song in the choir uh, at one of the churches I was at, and we had a choir. We sang it. It was great, man. Everybody just loved it. Moved people to tears. They're amen and left and right because uh, we're singing this very patriotic song on a time like this. We were singing, it's always been the soldiers, and that was the name of the song. It's always been the soldiers uh, who've given us our liberty, and uh, it's a great song. Everybody loved it, and I got to think something isn't sitting right with me. So I looked at all the lyrics to the song. Never says one thing about God. <laughs> but those soldiers couldn't do anything without God. Those soldiers, you know, thank you for giving your life, but you know what? It, it would all be in vain if it's not done for God. If you save, if you save the world from death and they all die and go to hell, <laughs> okay, it would have been better if they would have just died and got it over with, right? Or something. Uh, you've got to put all of the glory on God. And this is what the world doesn't understand, but we have gotten to a point where even in our churches, we exalt men to the place where it's almost sickening. Yeah. You know, let's right. have a day where we get in all law enforcement. Now look, I, I'm not, I'm, ha I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you are thankful to these people and you want to give them something or whatever, but, but this is the house of God. I mean, look, we only have so many days a week that we can just meet together as God's people and say, thank you, God, for all you've given us. Right. And so I don't want to waste that on humans. <laughs> Here's what it says in verse 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Now, I don't know. I don't hope it's not disrespectful to talk about God like this, but when you sign up for a job, you know, sometimes the hourly uh, wages that you make aren't all you're looking at. You're looking at the benefit package. <laughs> what else do I get with this with this package deal? You know, do I get health benefits? Do I get a 401k? Do I get <laughs> this is the word benefit, right? There's something. There's some great benefits of being part of this organization or whatever. Well, God says, look, if you will fear me, and some things we'll talk about here in a minute. If you will honor me, you'll come to me. I and just going to pour out my blessings upon you. And everyone says, well, following the Lord is just so hard, man. You lose friends, and you, you know, this goes back wrong, and you don't get to do this. You don't get to follow your dreams. No, no, it's all worth it. Yeah. Every bit that you give to the Lord is worth it, and he's going to repay you um, uh, way more than you could ever uh, get on this earth. Okay, in the flesh, it's easy to focus on all the negatives around us. It's easy to focus on that time somebody did you wrong. That time, you know, where you went through this great sickness and you're like, why, God, I don't understand why I had to go through that. Or you lost a loved one or something like that. It's easy to think about all that's happened in our life. In fact, I know a guy, uh, he was supposed to be at church today, but I know a guy who was in a uh, special services. I can't remember which branch. And he was in special services, jumped out of planes, did all, all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, saw a lot of death, saw a lot of friends die in Vietnam, stuff like that. And to this day, he has P what's it called? PTSD. PTSD. 
and uh, and you know it's caused him all kind of psychiatric problems. He's in and out of the, the psychiatrist and on different medication and, and his constant smoking and stuff like that to, to you know calm his nerves and all this kind of stuff. And and look, I've never been through what he's been through, uh, but he kind of lives for whatever reason, kind of lives in this state of just woe is me. You know, he lives in this state. So then he finally got saved, came to the Lord. First time somebody from the church, this was many years ago, somebody from the church went and knocked on his door. He's like, get out of here. I've seen so much death. I've seen this and that. You know, you can't tell me there's a God. But somehow that guy got through to him. And he started thinking about it. He ended up going to church and getting saved. Praise the Lord. And so years later, he decided to uh, go into the ministry. And he ended up, uh, his wife left him or something. And things started going bad. He started losing uh uh, support obviously and and uh, and all that so so years so he kind of fell away and just kind of you know lived the backslid in life and then finally he came back to uh, to church and said hey I'm gonna get back in this thing and then it was like well now we're gonna have to wait because you know you got a backslid quite a, quite a ways and we want to make sure you're you're gonna be back on track and you're gonna be serving the Lord and all that before we get you out there in the ministry so then there was also then he began to live in this constant like you know man nobody likes me nobody appreciates me you know everybody's just God, Lord called me into the ministry and 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 now all the pastors are just acting like you got to be perfect going to ministry and I'm like man you can't live your life just in this constant thing and people did me wrong but so you don't know what I've been through you know and let me tell you something if you ever are like that I don't see very many in this room I don't think anyone in this room is really like that but if you ever like that Here's what you don't get from people, sympathy. <laughs> you just don't. All you get is, I don't want to be around that person. And then people just stop being around you. And so it's just going to get worse and worse. And, and I, I, we should care for one another for sure. But I'm just saying, it, it, when you're when all you want to talk about is how bad your situation is, you, know, you just don't get a whole lot of sympathy. we got to constantly remind ourselves about the benefits that God has promised us. And in order to do that, sometimes we've got to look past and forget about all the struggles that are out there and all the hardships and all the pain. And, and you just don't know what I went through. You don't know what my upbringing was like. You don't know the pain that I have. You don't know the ailment that I have. We can't sit around and remember that. And another thing, we can't remember how things used to be. You know what I mean? I remember uh, certain things, and if I start thinking about them and how great they were, it'll discourage me sometimes. Like, oh, man, remember when things were so great? Does that remind you of any stories in the Bible? Look at Numbers chapter 11. You know, the Lord's leading you out of Egypt, and he leads you into the wilderness, and you're thinking, I'm finally free. I'm not a slave any longer. And then you stop, and you're thinking, man, this wandering through the wilderness is pretty tough, and I'm kind of sick of, of eating manna all the time. Numbers chapter 11, verse 4. And the mixed multitude that went that was among them fell lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Sounds good to me, but you know, you know, probably when they're in Egypt though, they're probably like, I'm so tired of leeks and garlic and onions. Like I want some meat. I want some, I want some bread, you know, give me something. Uh, you know, it just gets so easy to forget how you have it and then be looking for something else. Now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna. Oh, you mean that heavenly food that God dropped down from the sky supernaturally? <laughs> oh, this manna is all we got. I just forget, you know, I, why can't we go back to being slaves and get some onions and some garlics? But isn't that how we are sometimes? We've, you know, oh, remember back when. No, you need to forget that. And you need to look forward at what God has for you. He's got some better things for you. Ezra chapter 3. chapter 3, remember the, uh, they're back into the land. Now they've been in, in captivity for 70 years in Babylon, and now they're going back into the land. And, and they built the foundation of the new temple, 
All right, the old temple had been destroyed. And uh, it says in Ezra 3.12, But many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers, who were ancient men that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice. Now it says some of them shouted for joy, but when I read that, I can't help but think that in the context, what it's, what's happening is those who, they remember 70 years ago when they saw that great temple, and now the temple's been destroyed, and all they have is this foundation, and it's nothing like the old temple was, and they just, they're, they're weeping, right? They're so sad to see that others are happy because, hey, we're back in the land, we're building a temple, and, the, and, and they're ready to go. That's mostly the younger people, but the older people. And look, in the ministry, it's like that. Uh, we constantly hear, and I'm not down in them, I understand how they get to that point, but we constantly hear, well, I remember when this place used to run 100. I remember whenever the, the Sunday school classes were just packed and overflowing. I remember when we used to fill the bus routes. We'd have to go out and get another batch of kids to bring them in for this different ministry. And I'm like, man, that's just, why are you so negative? <laughs> now, they're not saying that they're not happy for what's going on, but they just want to live in the past. And look, there's some things we need to just forget about. Hey, that's not us now. This is where we are. We want to look forward to the benefits that God has for us, the, the benefits that he's going to bestow upon us. We, we should forget about those things and look at these. Back to your back to our text here. One of, Psalm 103. The text here tells us some things that we need to remember instead. Forget about those types of things and, for, and instead remember this. Verse 3. Forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Amen for that. Like I already mentioned, you know, aren't you glad? He remembers them no more. Uh, I heard a guy say uh, one time, uh, maybe a lot of preachers have used this this, this uh, uh, kind of preacher joke or something, I don't know, but uh, they talk about, you know, you reap what you sow. You know, you're sowing uh, good things, you'll reap good things. Sow bad things, reap bad things. And he said, man, I praise the Lord for crop failure. Because I've sowed a lot of bad things in my life that God never <laughs> brought back. And, uh, and so praise the Lord that that didn't come up to pass. You know, you, you think, man, if God's really fair, if it's just every, for everything that you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Man, we'd be in big trouble, some of us. <laughs> and so praise the Lord for crop failure. And uh, and so we got to remember this, that he forgiveth our iniquities. How about this one? Who healeth all thy diseases. Instead of living our life thinking, oh, man, this is terrible. You see how many people are dying? You see how many people are sick out there with the coronavirus? You see how, how bad things are? Look, it, it might be bad. And I'm thankful, like I said, we've, we've not seen it here. Uh, Allen County hasn't seen anything. So uh, in Iola, uh, you know, nobody there has, 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 has contracted anything. So praise the Lord for that. But if you're in the heart of it somewhere, and maybe you got friends and family of, and, and fe uh, uh, affected by it, uh, this virus, look, it's God who's going to heal it. It's God Amen. that's going to take care of it. And, I, and what you can say is, man, I've been through a lot of sicknesses in my life. And instead of saying, oh, how bad those sicknesses were, he got us through it. He gives us our health. He gives us, uh, let's keep reading. He gives us, uh, oh, where is it? I thought somewhere in there it talks about the food that we eat. Well, let's just keep reading. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction? How many of us were headed? I mean, I got saved at a young age, so maybe this doesn't apply to all of us, but some people were headed to just a, just the gutter, you know, in and out of prison, drugs, alcohol, all that kind of stuff, headed towards destruction. And God brought them up out of the miry clay, put them on the solid rock, sure. and, uh, and saved them from that. Praise the Lord. Think about that. Amen. Amen. Think about that. Amen. Who crowneth me with loving kindness and mercies. He crowneth you with loving kindness and tender mercy. You know, God has poured out so much on me and my life and just loved me and, and blessed me and taken care of me. Look, I'm sure there's some negative things I could dwell on. But when you start looking at all those positive, you think, man, uh, how, how good God is. And sometimes you can do this. Now, I'm not saying get in the flesh and start patting yourself on the back. But sometimes you can say, 
I'm so glad. I'm not talking about like the Pharisee. I'm so glad I'm better than this sinner over here. But isn't it right for you to look and say, man, I'm so glad I was raised by, by the Bible. I'm so glad I don't live that way anymore. I'm so glad, you know, I know how to forgive somebody. I know how to love somebody. I know how to do these things. Could you imagine living in life where you're just constantly, you know, just living with regrets and you're living with, uh, uh, you know, where you're, you, where you just hate somebody. You know, I can't imagine living with hatred in my heart towards somebody just every day. All you can think about, how can I get even with this person? People live like that, apparently. <laughs> it blows my mind to think about it, but people live with that. How can I get even? I just can't forgive that person, and it destroys their life. I'm so glad he brought us out of destruction. I'm so glad he clothed us with uh, his, his uh, tender mercies. Let's see here. Verse, uh, verse 9. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us uh, uh, after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Again, he's not really given us what we deserve. You know, it's, some, it's become kind of popular for people to say, you know, how are you doing? And they say, oh, better than I deserve. Well, that is true. <laughs> We're all doing better than what we deserve, no doubt about it. So we need to remember these things. We need to remember, uh, you know, I mentioned food. Uh, I think that's verse 5 I was looking for. It says, who satisfied the mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles uh, you know he just he just has given us so much Amen. now if anybody I don't think anybody here is thinking this way but if you preach this kind of message and someone's thinking well that's easy for you to say but you don't know what I've been see that's the problem <laughs> and you're remembering the wrong things uh, you need to forget about those things and you need to think on uh, good things all right uh, let's see here Ephesians chapter 5. There's another thing you need to forget. If you were saved out of that type of a lifestyle, a very sinful lifestyle, obviously we all have sins in our past and things that we wish we could just uh, erase from the record. Uh, but we, you know what we need to not do as Christians Sometimes Christians want to just constantly share that testimony, you know, they constantly want to tell people And, and here's what I've seen pr Primarily with younger people like teenage, you know, some guy comes into the group and he's he's a Christian now But man, he had a rough past and so then these kids who've never lived that way before start asking questions about that You know, then what you, what was that like? What <laughs> and they're almost like glorying in the in the how bad of a sinner they used to be the Bible, that, there's, there's nothing good that comes out of that. The best thing for someone to do, they had a bad past. You know, obviously there's sometimes it's going to come up. Sometimes, you know, especially if you're dealing with somebody who's living that kind of lifestyle, you're saying, hey, here's where God brought me from. God can use that, no doubt about it. But here's what we need to do is just not make this big show about it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, it's best just to not even talk about them. You know, one of the worst things I could have done whenever they had that uh, uh, that shooting at a, at a uh, sodomite nightclub, whatever, and they had that shooting, and I started looking at it because some people were like like actually making these people like heroes or something. And I started looking like, well, maybe it's not as bad as I think it is, but I think it's pretty disgusting. And I started looking at some of the things that goes on, and I just read like two paragraphs and said, I don't even want to know. I mean, that's way beyond what I, I mean, it's just disgusting, you know. God knew what he was doing, send that guy in there. He probably reprobated himself, right? He went in there and shot everybody up. He knew what he was doing. And so, uh, you know, we shouldn't even just want to know. You know, maybe, maybe I, I'm just curious, you know, what's it like? No, you don't, don't go down that road. I remember right. in high school, kids telling me, well, you never been drunk before, man. I need to take you out and get you drunk sometime. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Not interested. All right. I don't need to know what it's like. Amen. <clears throat> we need to remember all the benefits God's given us and all the things that He saved us from, and we need to look forward to them. Number two, num look at verse 17 in our text.
verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments and do them. Next thing we need to do is remember God's commandments. Amen. Remember his Amen. laws. Amen. Now we have too many Christians that say, well, we're not under the law, but under grace. Now, I understand that. And I, and I praise the Lord that I'm not held accountable for you know, following all the laws of the Old Testament. But look, that's not how you read the Bible. Like, just cut all that out. It doesn't apply to me anymore. You read the Bible and say, this is the word of God. This is the mind of God. Amen. What was pleasing to him in the Old Testament probably speaks to what is pleasing to him today. You know, what he punished in the Old Testament, probably what he his, wants to pour his wrath out today. And so we read the Bible and not just, uh, you know, forget that those things are in there. This is something we need to remember. Uh, I like how David said, uh, uh, let's see. I'm not sure where it was that he said that. Let's go to, I think it's Psalm 119. Yeah, that's it. Psalm 119. I'm sure you're familiar with this, but every verse in Psalm 119, every single verse says something about God's word. It's such a blessing. You know, it's either the law or the testimonies or the precepts or the statutes or the commandments or the judgments or ordinances, but they're all talking about God's word. Psalm 119 Verses 9 through 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. David loved God's word. He loved the law. And uh, I find it interesting because I think about all the, the sins he fell into and all the bad things he did. I don't know when he wrote this exactly, but I think about that a lot. And there are other songs where he says, God, judge me. And know my heart, you know, and he's, and he's asking God to judge him, and he's demanding that, hey, he's innocent, he hasn't done anything wrong. Other times he's saying, you know, hey, I really messed up, God, will you forgive me? But, you know, in those times where he's just talking about, you know, hey, I want to know that your word, and I want to do right, and, and I want to have a clean heart. And it's like, I think he forgot his past, <laughs> which is a good thing. And, 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 and hey, we need to be humble about it and realize what God brought us from. But to, he didn't live with that. Oh man, I'm just I can never do anything from God, for God because uh, I messed up my life so bad. No, he said now I want to know. Now I want to read uh, God's word. Now I want to get right the things that I did wrong before. And he says here in uh, verse, uh, let me see, eleven. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We need to constantly be seeking God's will, hiding his word, memorizing scripture, applying scripture to ourselves. Why? Because we love the Lord and we don't want to sin against him. And so the only way we can uh, live like that is to remember his commandments. In order to do this, we got to forget our own feelings and our own ambitions. Sometimes forget certain ways in which we were raised. We read the Bible and it contradicts the way maybe we were brought up. We have to say, hey, God's right. Yep, my parents were wrong. My teacher was wrong. And so uh, I think about people that I just, the other day, saw a young person that grew up in the, uh, like a camp and all that stuff is where we knew this young lady. And she posted something that said, you know, I'm just one of those people. Is it going to speak my mind? That's just the way I was raised. That's just the way I was taught. And, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell people. I thought, what, isn't that a Christ-like attitude? <laughs> no, it's not. The Bible makes it very clear, right? That you can't just say, "But well, I know the Bible says that, but I was taught. Right. Forget what you were taught. Man. What does the Bible say? Man. We need to realize uh, that our hearts are desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17, 9, our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
We might not ever understand some of the things that God wants us to do or the ways that he wants us to live. But I look at Isaiah 55. That's to be expected that we won't understand. We don't expect our kids to understand everything that we tell them to do or all the things that we tell them they can't do. We don't expect that they're just going to understand that. Uh, but we tell them what's good for them. And the Lord does that for us. And so Isaiah 55, look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so we understand this as we read the Bible that, uh, that we have to forsake our ways, forget what we were taught, forget our way of thinking, and apply what God has taught us. Look at uh, Ecclesiastes 12, familiar passage. And while you're there, I'll read to you from Philippians 3. And then since I brought up some of Solomon's words earlier. I'll close with his words, but first let me read Philippians 3, 13. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Listen. Forgetting those things which are behind. See, there's some things we need to forget. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Here was this guy that was in the flesh in many ways. I mean, he was under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost here, but uh, but God was just using what was coming out of his heart, and he was in the flesh thinking about life under the sun and not thinking about heavenly things, certainly not laying up treasures in heaven. But even at the end of this book, we find some of the wisest words in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And so I love his thinking there. You know, hey, just forget about all these things. Forget about even this depression. Forget about this. And I'll, here's what I need to do. I need to fear God. I need to serve him. I need to hide his word in my heart. And I need to follow after him with everything I've got. Lord, we thank you for your word. I do pray that you help us, each one of us to hide it in our hearts. Help us to forget any of the negatives in life, the things that we we deal with that we think that uh, are too much for us. Lord, help us forget about those things. Help us forget about our past, uh, things that have happened to us in the past. And help us uh, just press toward the mark, Lord, and, 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 and uh, just obey your word and the things you've told us to do. And uh, let us not forget your many benefits. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's sing. Uh